When I started painting these portraits, and uh, I thought it was going to be a collection of 19th century figures who had tried to extend the rights and privileges of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence to all people. And after Walt Whitman, the sec I think the second person I painted was Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass had been a slave in Maryland. He had escaped when he was 17. And he became one of the most highly educated, credible voices for the abolition of slavery. As a teenager, he was always a little obstreperous. He didn't like being told what to do. And he would often complain, argue back to his owner, that he didn't want to do that or he didn't found that insulting to have to do certain things. And there were certain people in the South who were called slave breakers. And their job was to take a misbehaving slave and beat them until they had given up wanting to misbehave ever again. Try to, they would try to kill their spirit. So when Frederick Douglass was 17, he was you know, sent to the farm of this man named Edward Covey, who was a slave breaker, who began working on him to try to make him subservient and obedient. At first, Frederick Douglass you know, was willing to do anything but that, and he kept paying for it. And then one time, Edward Covey, the slave breaker, uh, was beating him, and Frederick Douglass thought to himself, if I allow this to go on right now, my spirit will be killed and I will become what they want me to become, this docile, obedient slave who has uh, no will or spirit to stand up for himself. And at that moment he thought, well, I have nothing to lose. And he fought back and he actually beat up the slave breaker. And the slave breaker, Edward Covey, for reasons that Frederick Douglass talks about in his uh, autobiography, he doesn't understand why that man didn't kill him or, uh, or do something much more violent to him. He, he, he thinks it may have been because he was embarrassed that this had happened. And also, he didn't, Edward Covey didn't own Frederick Douglass. It was somebody else, so he, uh, he couldn't kill him. But because of that, he, his spirit was totally reborn. And it was at that moment that he realized he was going to escape. Well, all of us, you know, there are often these kind of key moments where we, whether it's, you know, just standing up to a bully in the playground or, you know, something like that. When we do the thing that we wouldn't necessarily thought, think that we would do, stand up for ourselves or for somebody else uh, when we're being treated badly, the, the willingness to do that uh, can actually change our lives. Because once you've done that, you realize that you can do it again and again and again, that you will never be as subservient as you're being taught to be. And whether it's you know, standing up against a war that, you, that, that the government is telling you to fight in that you think is unjust, or whether it's telling you that you're going to go to jail if you don't get in line to do something else, you know, that's, um, these are really important moments, not just for yourself, but then because what that becomes for other people.